Hiya guys, uh, nice to see you again. Um, still in the lockdown uh, and it's a Sunday. Normally, normally uh, be fishing of course and making my little uh, vlog of uh, the match. Unfortunately, uh, as I say, we're in the lockdown now so we can't really do a lot except uh, do a little prep. Um, I've been obviously doing a lot on the internet lately, talking to a few boys. Um, and I've had a couple of questions fired at me, in fact, uh, and I thought I'd try to answer one or two. Um, somebody asked me yesterday about hemp fishing. Um, you know, what do I do about hemp fishing? Uh, well, hemp, uh, in fact, has, has won me a lot of uh, money over the years um, in one way or, or another. And I think what I'd like to do today on this vlog is to maybe just go through a few... Uh, things that um, has helped me in my fishing, in my match fishing, and helped me win a few matches. Um, and, you know, I'll show you the way I, if you like, uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> I won't show you, but I'll tell you how I prepare um, the hemp. I'll also um, show you how I um, hook the hemp, which is one other thing. Uh, and I also believe that hemp is a great um, attractant and a feeder and a ground bait. But uh, more about that in a minute, because uh, uh, I want to maybe go back to the, the origins of uh, hemp and when I, I first started using it. So uh, let me uh, just tell you about that uh, in a minute. Yeah, so anyway, uh, hemp fishing. How, how did I get into hemp fishing? I suppose it was back in the, the 1960s um, when we used to fish the local Road Park Lake um, matches. Uh, that was mainly... Uh, um, waggler fishing and then um, some of the lads we started using uh, whip fishing you know catching those small roach and anyway um, the history of the hemp basically I believe it um, it was used quite a lot on the continent and uh, a lot of the um, continental anglers would, would use it and basically uh, there was lots of things written about hemp at the time and um, you know reports would be in uh, recorded in the angling papers about uh, you know where people were catching on it so anyway um don't know which one of us but one of us uh, thought we'd try it on the local road park and um well what I, all i can say is that it it, uh, it was amazing it started to double treble our weights in in the matches and um of course we we all had to learn how to use the hemp um you know and uh, there are many ways of uh, using hemp and um, like the um, the angler who mentioned, you know, how do you know how do you, how and when do you feed? How much do you feed, uh, and so on. Well, all I can say is that it's quite varied when it comes to actually um, the feed inside of it, um, which is quite surprising because uh, I also mentioned, uh, and this might surprise you, that um, you don't sometimes you don't even have to feed hemp to catch roach. Um, with hemp on the hook, if that makes sense, because it just seems to be a, a natural um, food for he for fish and roach in particular. Um, a lot of people say that it resembles the little snails that you get, you know, in the water. Um, you know, and if you if you ever look at those snails, you ever draw some weed out, you see these little snails clinging onto it. So, my guess is, I, I think the fish are probably uh, think that they are small snails. Um, and of course, when they're, they're fed in, in uh, drip fed into the water, then obviously it becomes uh, um, very attractive to the fish and very stimulating because um, even though uh, the shell is quite hard, you know, because after you cook uh, hemp, which I'll ex explain a little bit about the hemp uh, side in a minute, but um, it becomes slightly softer, and uh, but it's still hard that the fish have to get the hemp back into the farang teeth which is the back of the throat and that's where they basically need to crush it and uh, uh, but anyway you might even ask uh, you might have even experienced uh, where you where you miss a lot of bites on the hemp but again that's that's another something that I, I'll, I'll try and cover a little bit if I can okay well um, as I say that that's a history I think the history uh, I think it was a Polish anglers or certainly somewhere from that continent started using it and they started to import it into the country um 
Of course, hemp, as you probably know, is probably a derivative from the hemp plant, uh, which grows the cannabis smoking weed. So <laughs> uh, I've got to tell you a story about that, because uh, when I was in Evesham and uh, we had the floods, the, the garage got knocked down. Well, I had a couple of sacks of hemp and uh, somehow it got dispersed over the garden. Of course, when the, the water receded and, and, uh, and basically the, the ground was quite soggy, um, after... Um, few weeks and all these little shoots coming up <laughs> and uh, they were the hemp they were growing and I thought blimey they you know we're gonna be careful I'm, I'm sure it's illegal to grow this stuff um, because you know most of the hemp that's brought into the country is actually treated so it, it doesn't germinate um, but I think you've got there's a male and a female to it to it anyway but on this occasion for some reason they they uh, started growing and sprouting and um, Anyway, I kept my eye on it. Then one night, uh, one morning, I should say, I went down in the garden and they'd all gone, every single plant. So somebody obviously had an eye on it, knew what they were, and uh, plucked them out of the garden. So, um, hmm. Which also reminds me, um, how, how can you rejuvenate the hemp uh, to grow it yourself? Well, um, <laughs> I can tell you because I know a couple of people who've actually done it, but uh, maybe... Maybe in a later vlog. <laughs> All right, let me show you a little bit more about the hemp. Okay, so when the hemp actually arrives, or when you purchase hemp, it's normally in its uh, in its original form. Don't know if you can see that. I can show you. Yeah. Okay, so it's quite dry, and it has to be soaked um, to soften up, and at the same time, um, if you cook it. Um, it becomes soft enough to be able to um, use it for feed and also to put on the actual hook itself. Now, there's a couple of ways of cooking hemp. Um, it's always a good idea to actually soak hemp uh, before you actually cook it. Um, I usually soak it overnight and then the next morning um, it only takes a few minutes to actually cook it. Um, otherwise, if you do uh, cook it, put it on a slow Bring it, bring it to the boil, and then um, just simmer it until um, keep an eye on it until the seeds start. Um, the, what we call the kernel, the white bit of the um, uh, of the hemp, starts coming out, and then uh, that's it. And then just, just obviously uh, simmer it off, cool it off, uh, bag it up, ready for fishing. Um, the other thing is uh, you can add a bit of bicarb with uh, the hemp because it will turn black. Um, uh, and, w and when it turns black, uh, you know, I'll show you some cooked hemp now if I can, which I've done earlier for you. Yeah. Oh, I've got a little hook there, so I'm going to show you the hook that in a minute. I'll show you the hook. Up. Okay, so that's what they that's what they look like. So if I show you that, and there's your. <laughs> Let me just show you the uh, uncooked hemp so you can see the difference. See? Okay, so you got the un and cook and cook them together then. So um, another little secret is uh, you know we're turning the hemp black and that is um, as well as putting uh, bicarb in there. Trouble is uh, with bicarb it will <laughs> not care if it'll, it'll over boil and go with the saucepan. Um, another little trick we learned many years ago we put, used to put a little couple of drops of uh, food colouring or um, uh, dylon, what's called dylon which is a, a clothes colouring which used to um, colour them black as well so uh, that's another little tip that you know that maybe um, you know if you want to turn them black. But anyway, even so, a little bit of pinch of bicarb. Sometimes people don't bother with it at all. Um, it'll turn black enough and, and good enough to be able to fish without without it. Um, I think bicarb is used in a lot of cooking to, to um, you know, soften and, uh, um, you know, the food. So um, it, it doesn't harm the fish, of course, and uh, may even add, add a bit of flavour to it. We don't know. Okay, right, now... Um, as I said, uh, hemp fishing, um, the way to fish hemp, there's many, many different ways of fishing it. Um, there's still water hemp fishing and there's river hemp fishing. Of course, we learnt um, originally to fish um, hemp on, on the still water, where we used to use whips. Um, later on, of course, we used the pole because uh, with pole fishing, you can get over the top of the float um, and uh, you know, obviously it's much easier to actually and uh, quicker uh, to hook a fish uh, once the pole is like over the top of the float. 
Otherwise, uh, we used to fish the whip, and of course you'd miss a lot of bites, and because um, they're very, very quick um, uh, bites with hemp, because uh, they, as, as I said, because they have to get the hemp down the throat, and quite often it's in and out, in and out, they crush it, spit it out, and um, you know, and that's why hence you you do get a lot of uh, miss bites fish and hemp. And also another factor, which we learned later on, that um, a lot of small uh, roach or small fish will try and take a hemp without actually getting it into their mouth. So, uh, as I say, uh, it actually um, um, it, it produces a false bite then, obviously, from these small fish. Um, and why we know this is that we, uh, we, we <laughs> one of the lads came up with the idea, I don't know, but he actually threaded a hemp and put it up the line above the hook. And because uh, he was missing bites, so he, you know, he thought, well, what can he do? So this is what he done, and uh, he put the hemp above the the uh, hook on the line, and he anyway he was hooking little, little roach like that. So that just goes to show you that uh, obviously you know that a lot of those missed bites you get is because you know, the fish are so small they can't get the hemp into the mouth. But um, as I say, it's a marvelous bait. I mean, we use uh, hemp quite a lot um, in our ground baits, you know, uh, because of the effervescent effect it creates, and the, and of course the uh, the nice smell that uh, the fish find it very uh, nice because of the amino acids in it. Okay, um, let me just show you then about hooking hemp's. Actually, did, did I just say um, hooking the hemp's? <laughs> what I meant to say, hooking the hemp. Well, first of all, you need to get a hemp, um, and it's always a good idea to get a good size hemp because when you buy hemp, it, you know you can buy them in small um, bird size uh, size, which you know uh, obviously hemp is used for feeding birds as well, by the way. Um, and uh, quite often, if you send off a blind, you know, on mail orders or on the on the internet, sometimes it comes back and it's like it's like well, it's so small, it's like uh, bird seed. So what you want is, is a bit of a, a good quality one, you know, at least, um, if you can, at least one centimetre. So, there. so now the traditional way to hook a hemp is after cooking and, and the, um, the hemp actually splits, what you, uh, what we what you can do is, is basically put the hook, the bend of the hook, okay, into the split. I'll try to demonstrate that now. So uh, the easiest way is, is to actually um, get the hemp um, on the crown and the base of it and just push it together slightly and that will open it up. And what you do, you just simply put the hemp in so it's, it's basically, you know, um, the shell hangs onto the, the actual hemp itself. Let me quite see that. Uh, the only problem is with that, of course, it does tend to come off quite easy, uh, and especially if you have a bite and you 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 strike and, and it's come off. Well, um, obviously you've got to rebate. Now, um, if your eyes are good, that's not a problem. But when your eyes get like mine, then uh, it has become a bit of a nuisance <laughs> because uh, you know it takes a, it takes a while sometimes, especially if you're using very small hooks. Now, we always find the best type of hooks to use are obviously. Um, um, small hook, small hook the better, um, because uh, you don't want to add weight to the hemp. Because I think the secret um, in catching fish with hemp is is the um, uh, the balance. You've got to get the right balance, um, because when a hemp, because if you ever throw a handful of hemp in the water, you'll see that some uh, sink quicker than others, and some are a bit you know slower. So. Um, it's hard, it, like, unlike a maggot where you can put a floating maggot on, you know, um, it's, a, it's a good idea sometimes if you, if you um, put some hemp in water and you get a couple of floaters, then use them as for your hook because that'll, um, hook bait, because that'll balance the weight of the hook. But otherwise, you know, you can't do that all, all the time. So, um, the better the hook, the lighter the hook, the better. Um, uh, I used to use the Matrix Supermatch, but unfortunately it's not making them now, so... Um, um, I've got to look for an alternative. I used to use the um, uh, B520s, which uh, they're still quite good. They're quite thin, quite light. They're strong as well, so that's one good thing. Okay, uh, another way to hook um, the hemp, which I think is probably the best way, and that is to actually put it through the crown. So you put it through the crown and you thread it and you, you hook the hemp almost like as if you hooked the maggot. And that way it doesn't come off. 
Now, the best way to explain, uh, the crown is right on the top. And if you, if you look at a um, hemp, you, you see the crown. And all you do is thread the hook right into the top of it. Um, and uh, you need a sharp hook to do it, of course. Okay, so I just put that through. Now, if I can show you, that will stop moving. There you are. Shaking a bit for the camera. There you are. If you can see that, basically what I've done, I've put the hook through the through the crown of the hemp, and I've passed it back through the split. Okay, so basically, now that will stay on, don't matter, you know, you shake it or whatever. But um, that's a good way of hooking it because what happens then, of course, is the fish, um, quite often the point uh, will go into the mouth. Uh, by the time it blows it back out of the mouth, and it, it'll catch, uh, catch in the mouth and hook, hook the fish. And the surprising thing about hooking it this way is that you can actually uh, catch um, quite a few fish uh, on the, the same... Uh, hemp and and uh, as I said, I've caught as many as half a dozen fish on the same hemp uh, because all you do is just simply take it out of the fish's mouth of course and the hemp is still on there so uh, as I say that's a great little um, way of hooking the hemp and that's my preferred way okay yeah okay that's um, as I say that's that's the way I, I generally try to use it but sometimes <laughs> I don't know why um, you know, you, you even miss bites uh, that way sometimes. So another way is to get a, um, a sharp uh, needle, um, a bait needle, if you like. Okay, and uh, you can, if you get hold of the hemp, you can actually make a little hole on either side. So I've got one there, I turn it round, and then another on the other. I don't know, can't quite show you there, but what I've done, I, I pierced the hemp itself on both sides and then what I'll do now is just pass a hook through that hole and I'll show you what I mean now okay so what I've what I've done now um, I've actually passed it through the two holes that I've made okay into the hemp so they're basically holding the hemp together okay and that, again that's another way uh, basically that keeps the hemp on the hook without it coming off you know um, again it's a bit fiddly it takes a bit longer than perhaps just passing it through the crown but at least you know it's another way of doing it um, and it's quite a quick way of doing it of course in matches when you're fishing competitions it's all speed is is very important and um, another way um, or another way of hooking hemp is to actually you have to um, prepare them at home and what you do you actually put um, similar to what I've just shown you then you basically um, put a needle with a bit of nylon or a bit of uh, white cotton is always a good idea because that, that almost looks like a, a kernel then and you pass it through the uh, the hemp and and you tie it up and you so basically you've got like a little loop a cotton loop uh, going through the actual hemp itself and then all you do is just hook um, put the hook in the loop um, of the cotton that's holding the, the hemp and uh, again that's a very quick way of doing it um, especially you know if you're speed fishing where you're basically trying to um, uh, you're catching fish and you want to get get put the hemp on the hook very very quickly so that's another way of doing it um, again um, if you prepare at home I normally prepare a couple of dozen that would normally see you through a match um, as I say, and that, that way then you keep them in a separate little container, um, you know, a little container, and then basically uh, they're there ready for you for when uh, when you're fishing. Um, so there you are. Now, um, we used to, <laughs> there was another way as well, I don't use it so much in these days, we used to, we used to super glue um, hemp, you know, a dried hemp uh, onto the actual hook. Um, it is another way of doing it as well, uh, but again, um, it's without cooking the actual hemp, but again, it's a bit more painstaking, and that is where we get a felt pen and we actually colour the hemp black. Um, and that way, uh, without it being cooked, we know that it's quite a firm 
um, shout uh, to the hemp and you can use the various ways I've just shown you how to hook the hemp um, so that's uh, that's another way um, I'm sure there's there's probably a few other ways that um, anglers uh, may may hook their hemp but those are the way that I use it and um, it's been quite successful for me yeah so um, those are the few ways of um, of obviously hooking the hemp um, uh, all, the, all I can say is experiment and find out which, which suits you best uh, as I said the um, the old traditional way as I said was put in the uh, the shank and the bend into the split so the shell itself sort of grips it you know um, uh, that's that was a, a favorite of mine for many years uh, and it still is when it the fish becomes quite shy you know uh, shy biting and you need to be able to release it quickly and um, you know the hook will come out of that shell into the fish's mouth otherwise as I said the one through the crown is probably one of the best now, um, when it comes to cooking the hemp, um, as I mentioned already, you know, by carb, um, there is another quick way, um, and that is to basically put it into a flask of hot water. You know, if you're only going to use, say, a, a pint or half a pint, uh, you can actually put that into a flask um, before you go fishing. So you've basically got fresh hemp when you arrive. Um, at your um, destination you know and then when you open when you, what you do is take the top off and just um, empty it obviously the water's going to be hot so be careful but let it cool off and then um, hence you know you'll have uh, some bait nice and fresh ready uh, and I do that quite often of course <laughs> um, you can't beat fresh hemp but it's also hemp is very versatile because you can also freeze it up what you don't use you can take back home freeze it in a bag and basically um, stick it in your freezer and whenever you're ready to go fishing again simply take it out let it thaw out and um, and there you go in fact I got one here now I'll show you yeah there you go so my, this is a frozen solid <laughs> as you can see um, good pint pint and half there um, now obviously this is um, this is in quite a big um, uh, amount if you like uh, a pint and a half now uh, there is a reason why um, I keep it in large quantities like this and I'll explain that to you now in a minute but when it comes to hemp fishing generally um, we learned many years ago that you know just a few grains at a time constantly going through the water um, so that uh, the fish obviously see it visually and um, but you, you know uh, the secret is, is to get the fish competing uh, for the hemp so if you throw a big handful in, generally, or, or more than, say, half a dozen grains, then the chance that's go, going to go straight to the bottom and um, you might miss the chance of, of catching a fish sort of on the drop. Because most the, uh, most time we fish for hemp is usually, you know, through the water or slightly off the bottom. When it comes to actually fishing the hemp, then there are a couple of ways of doing it. Now, this is vitally important because um, the way you feed hemp determines if you catch fish sometimes um, quite often you know you can go along and um, not, not get a bite on hemp and all of a sudden as long as you keep it going in con you know constantly you know all of a sudden the fish will respond to it and once they do then uh, you know you're in for a, a good day's fishing because generally the hemp keeps them attracted there all day long um, and uh, you know as I say little and often is a secret that brings me back if you like to the presentation of it because you want to make the hemp as light as possible as i mentioned with the hook and the same on your terminal tackle you really need to make sure that you've you've got um the uh, the shot in um very light down the line so that it so when you throw a, f a couple of grains of hemp in the actual uh um, hook bait will, will travel as natural as possible with the other grains falling through the water so that, that's a little tip um, many years ago we used to use these old like canal greys uh, long stem and we, we you know obviously had plenty of uh, um, tips showing so that when you had a bite uh, you know it would basically just sail away um, and you know you usually count to us you know half a second or one second uh, and then you'd strike because if you it, um, it's a t <laughs> 
It's hard to to um, slow down a strike when all of a sudden it just vanishes. <laughs> and that happens quite often uh, when you're fishing with hemp. So uh, what you really, the ideal bite is when it just slides away slowly and you just lift into it and, you, you know, hopefully you, you'll, you'll have the, the fish. Now, the only problem is with these type of old floats, there's quite a lot of resistance um, to them because, um, you know, fish could uh, tell the difference between the sensitivity, um, you know, any... Uh, uh, any restraint pressure uh, from the bait to the line to the float then obviously it would you know um, dispense of the uh, the bait in its mouth so it, it, that's what makes it quite hard to actually hook a lot of um, hemp hemp bites now I did develop one later on this was a, a small uh, do you can see that that's a small uh, quill and a, and a slightly larger bit of quill on the bottom I inserted that in that now that was a very good uh, float very sensitive again um, you know you can see it's quite a lot big tip to it so that's the type of float that we used later on with that with the uh, technology it is now now you've got these floats which are so so sensitive they're, they're nylon bristles and there's no resistance whatsoever so you know as I say when these go in the water um, you know obviously like a waggler uh, the, these were perfect so you know these bites are just like sail away and you definitely hit more uh, bites with that sort of float now as I mentioned when you fish over the top um, then obviously that's when a pole float uh, bristle comes into it where basically you, uh, you the line uh, is threaded through the eye on the top and you're over the top of the float so when it goes under you lift you know and, and hopefully you know you'll hook your fish um, different sizes uh, as I say, the way they shot them is very light uh, shots down. Now, um, over the years, I, I used to use split shots, but now these days, um, with the, the invention of stots, which is like a long, elongated shot, um, you don't get what we call shot bites so much. Um, under the old uh, split shots, then, you know, they, they'd mistake that for hemp, wouldn't they? And they would take it and you, you'd get the false bites. But by using, uh, as I say, um, these long gated stots, they're called, then that eliminates what we call, um, you know, false bites. Now, the secret, uh, as I said, is basically how do you feed? Now, I did mention early on that um, it's probably the only bait I know that... that uh, you don't even have to feed sometimes. Um, uh, obviously, you would need to feed a few grains of hemp initially to get the fish there. But once they're there, sometimes you don't really need to feed. And it's quite easy sometimes to overfeed it. Uh, and this has been proven on many times, especially fishing the Wallach Raven over the last few years. Um, there's one or two chaps, um, Ian Shepard, for example, always in the money because he's, he's perfected feeding to a great art and uh, and I've noticed him and I've been next to him and I've spoken to him and sometimes he'll run a float through um, without feeding and basically because the fish are already um, been feeding on some of the hemp and of course um, if you overfeed put more than three or four grains in I know you know you won't get a bite so th that is the secret sometimes um, in in feeding hemp is not to overdo it okay now um, as I say, going back to the old days when we used to fish the, the lake, um, you know, we, we'd always have a little pinch and we'd guess about, you know, a dozen grains of hemp and that is sufficient. If you get a big handful, you won't get a bite, you know, um, so that is the secret. Little and often and, um, and you know, basically laying your float down through the hemp so it, it all goes through the water naturally. Now, I did mention earlier as well about... Um, using hemp as a ground bait now i'm going to tell you a little story that uh, that's <laughs> that in the long term over the years has actually i learned uh, a little method a little cigarette that seems to have worked tremendously well for me now um on my years of uh, after winning the world championships i i was making a few videos and i went down to make one with a chap named eric bristol from maver fishing tackle and I was introduced at the time to um, Gaza, the footballer. There was uh, Dick Clegg there and a few other anglers, and we were making this video. Anyway, the night before, we uh, I stayed at uh, Phil's Briscoe's um, home, and uh, we were cooking up hemp. Now, 
when I say cooking a pen, he actually had a big, I suppose, gallon um, drum of it cooking, you know, on his stove. And I thought, blimey, you know, there's only a few of us fishing. I, I mean, I mean, I know he said no. He said there is a there's a, a method that that they use on the um, south forties uh, drain, I think it's called, and that is where they lash the hemp in. And that is pouches of, of hemp. And um, I thought, oh, this would be interesting. Anyway, the following day, we went along and, um, no, we only give me half a gallon of it. And I, and he started laying it in, basically lashes it, lashing it all over the water. And I thought, well, this is so different and contrary to what hemp fishing I'd done in my life. But the secret was, is, is uh, not fish hemp on the hook, but to fish something else, like a castor or a maggot. And uh, basically, when you lash the hemp in, you'd only put it like three or four maggots or three or four casters, so that when the hemp went in through the water, and I can imagine uh, it was like a rain of hemp coming through the water, and of course the fish would get so, um, I suppose, excited by this, they would pick up the bigger bits in the actual, you know, cloud of hemp that went through the water. Well, anyway, it worked a treat, and we caught, you know, loads and loads of roach. Now, I thought, hmm, I wonder if that was you know, particularly, uh, sort of, particular to that venue. May, did it work anywhere else? Well, I'll tell you a story now. Come back now. Yeah, so anyway, um, I thought, where else could this method work? Now, the only venue I knew of any resemblance where it could probably work, because uh, you, really you wanted a, a venue that's, um, that's quite deep, slow, sluggish, you know, not going too, too fast, and where they were roach. And I thought of the Bristol Avon at Newbridge, and I thought, hmm, that would work there. So anyway, lo and behold, I went along on, on a particular match, and I tried it, and it worked. It worked a treat. The following week, there was the South of England Pole Championships, and I thought, hmm, I wonder whether this would work. So anyway, I took it along to the uh, South of England Pole Championships, and I lashed it in, you know, half a gallon, uh, you know, it was a big, a big, um, uh, catapult, you know, filling it right up and just lashing it in, uh, fishing signal maggot through it, and uh, I won it. I won the match with seventeen pound. I won the the South of England Pole Championships. So it just goes to prove that sometimes the opposite works: lashing in, you know, hemp as a ground bait rather than fishing hemp, if you like, as a, as a, a main um, bait, you know, and a, and a, um, you know, and a main feed. So anyway. Cut long story short, I went along the following week on a, on a, a league match and then um, I was third and then uh, I went to another match, I was fourth the following week and I, you know, and one of the uh, local anglers, um, um, Barrett his name was, um, he, he seen what I was doing and he asked, uh, you know, what I was doing and how I'd done it and I told him. Anyway, um, the following season he, uh, he he started doing it and uh, he won the league for the first time, um, the uh, Wednesday league, I think it was. So there we are. So I like to think I taught him something. And uh, at the same time, um, it was a method that I quite often used over the years. And um, so basically just lashing a load of hemp uh, with just a few bits of uh, maggots or casters, whichever. It worked extremely well down at Huntspill. I was in the frame. I was, in the, I was winning sections every match I fished. And also, um, uh, when I fished other lakes, uh, it worked well. It worked well on Roth Park Lake, of all places. Never thought it would work there, but it did. Um, and, and there's countless other venues that it actually works. Um, but it don't work everywhere, because I tried it on the Wallachshire Raven, and it didn't work. The only way you could fish the Wallachshire Raven is, as I said, the Little and Often method. So, um, as I said, that was, uh, that's a great insight. So... Now, I hope you've learned a little bit about that because at the end of the day, um, hemp fishing is magical. It catches loads of fish and, you know, it is uh, one of the better baits and ground baits. In fact, I, I always carry hemp with me, um, even when it's frozen or even in tins. You can buy them in tins now and they last you forever. And, it's, you know, and um, if ever you, you need to put hemp in uh, the swim, then you, you've got it there. Uh, just uh, one word of caution, I think, <clears throat> is that if you're going to fish the hemp, stick to fishing hemp. Um, you know, try not to fish hemp 
um, or maggots and casters or whatever. He goes, um, try it, you know, it, it, it'll, you still catch fish, don't get me wrong, but uh, sometimes you don't want, I, I think you don't want to give the fish too much uh, choice. So if you're going to fish hemp, just fish hemp. And if you want to use tares, uh, now tares are basically um, like a pigeon uh, pellet that they feed pigeons on. Again, you have to cook them. You cook them in, cook them in bicarb to soften them up. And those you just thread on, you know, just put on the hook like you would hook a maggot. And you can fish tares in conjunction with hemp. So there's another little um, tip you, that you could use. Okay, so um, anyway... Uh, I think I call, <laughs> got it. Now, if there's any questions you want to know about hemp or uh, any other um, ideas you have, then please leave a comment below or you can message me and I'll be happy to, uh, you know, talk about it and answer it. So, um, as I say, yeah, that's the end of this um, this small vlog. And as I said, um, it's all down to the lockdown. What else can we do? Well, I can talk about fishing. Next best thing to actually doing it. <laughs> Um, as I, said, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, keep safe. Um, I think we're into like the uh, six weeks now, you know, uh, of the lockdown, and um, the government might even prolong it. We don't know, but we'll have to see. Uh, hopefully, um, you never know. Next time I see you, might be fishing, or I might not. But keep safe. See you next time.